Hi everybody, this is Joanne, and today's book review is going to start a little differently. I'm going to read to you. We find today's intrepid author in the South China Sea, waiting to go on an expedition the next day in search of Komodo dragons. Here, he chronicles uh, the difficulty he had going to sleep the night before. Sleeping in Labuan Baho, however, is something of an endurance test. Being woken at dawn by the cockerels is not in itself a problem. The problem arises when the cockerels get confused as to when dawn actually is. They suddenly explode into life, squawking and screaming at about 1 o'clock in the morning. At about 1.30, they realize their mistake and shut up, just as the major dog fights of the evening are getting underway. These usually start with a few minor bouts between the more enthusiastic youngsters, and then the full chorus of heavyweights weighs in with a fine impression of what it might be like to fall into the pit of hell with the London Symphony Orchestra. It is then quite an education to learn that two cats fighting can easily make as much noise as 40 dogs. It is a pity to have to learn this at 2.15 in the morning, but then the cats have a lot to complain about in La Buan Bajo. They all have their tails stocked at birth, which is supposed to bring good luck, though presumably not to the cats. Once the cats have concluded their reflections on this, the cockerels suddenly get the idea that it's dawn again and let rip. It isn't, of course. Dawn is still two hours away, and you still have the delivery van horn-blowing competition to get through to the accompaniment of the major divorce proceedings that have suddenly erupted in the room next door. At last, things calm down, and your eyelids begin to slide thankfully together in blessed pre-dawn hush. And then, about five minutes later, the cockerels finally get it right. This humorous look at an expedition can only be written by the great science fiction author Douglas Adams, but this happens to be a nonfiction book where Douglas Adams was asked by the BBC to accompany wildlife naturalist Mark Carwardine on a trip around the world to take one last look at endangered species before they might possibly become extinct. And he chronicled all of this in his lovely style in this book called Last Chance to See. And uh, believe me, the entire book is written just as wonderfully as that segment I read to you. They go out looking for the silver back mountain gorilla. They look for the white rhino, the kea bird in New Zealand, the river dolphin in China, and of course the Komodo dragon. So they're going to find these species that are on the verge of extinction and just to have this documented for us. Now this was written several years ago and naturally in the meantime we have lost a great author in Douglas Adams, but we do have now a more complete survey, a more serious book written by someone who is otherwise quite funny and humorous on TV, and this would be by naturalist Jeff Corwin, who has and had several different shows on different networks. So Jeff Corwin has written a book called 100 Heartbeats, The Race to Save Earth's Most Endangered Species. Um, I had the opportunity to meet the author briefly after he gave a speech to college students, many of them who knew exactly who Jeff Corwin was. They grew up with him, and many of them being inspired by his work, his love for nature, his love for wildlife, and his concern for the planet. So this book is a near complete survey of species that are endangered, near extinction. What I liked about this book was it, it really focused on the different scientists who are working to try to prevent this and the different methods we use to intervene and to save this species because of course once you start losing species we start to disrupt the food web and then it just has a trickle down effect and we really don't want to see this. He discusses success stories in saving endangered species like the bald eagle in America, the golden lion tamarind in Brazil, but then he also chronicles the various unsuccessful attempts to save endangered species, including way back uh, in early America, uh, the extinction of the passenger pigeon, which was used as food and as our population grew and they, there was no checks put in place to prevent uh, overshooting, overkilling of them, they, they did go extinct.
This book also tells us all about the different ways that extinction can occur. Disease, invasive species, uh, introduced species, pollution, global warming, and even uh, various types of exploitation, poaching and hunting and things like that. This book, very well written. You wouldn't sense the humor that you're used to seeing with Jeff Corwin, but I would say this is a great book if you were really wanting to an up-to-date look at endangered species, what we're trying to do, and even how you can help because the last part of the book happens to list organizations and people that are doing things. These are resources, things like Save the Tiger Fund, the South China Tiger Project, so it's listed by species. And Jeff Corrin even has a lovely new project that allows people to who want to help to maybe find a way to help to find the best match and it's called Corwin Connect and I suggest you go ahead and take a look at that if you are interested in helping save endangered species. So today I am recommending two books uh, along the same lines. I am recommending, highly recommending, Jeff Corwin's book, A Hundred Heartbeats and I am also recommending uh, Douglas Adams' book, Last Chance to See, as they both have the same goal in mind that we are aware of the endangered species on our planet and what we can do to help. Thank you so much for listening.